Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a third person platformer in Unity and welcome to episode 1. So in this series we are going to focus on creating a platformer style game for absolute beginners in Unity and it is a bit of a rehash of something I did many years ago when I first started on YouTube. So as I say we'll start at a beginner level and then obviously as we progress through the series we're going to go to a more advanced level depending on what we intend to do. So uh, as we go through, we'll take uh, inspiration from things that we've seen in various games, as long as many other things as well. And this series will be compatible with all versions of Unity, including past and present, and indeed future versions of Unity itself. So, realistically, if you've got Unity 2020 and you're in the future, this is going to be perfect for you. So, as we said, it is for absolute beginners, and everything you make in Unity can be built for pretty much any device that Unity is compatible with. So if we build this for a PC, we can also port it to Android and iOS if we wanted to. So when you begin Unity, your adventure, and you're presented with the download window, you must install at least Unity, the standard assets, Visual Studio, and whatever uh, device you want to build for. So, as I say, we're going to build in Windows, but we can use it on any device we wish. So, make sure everything is ticked, click Next, and we go through the whole installation process, which I'm not going to do in this video because that's a complete waste of time, I think. So, once it's all installed, you have Unity open, you'll be presented with something like this, once you have a new project. So, call it whatever you want, right here, you could call it Platformer and the location of where you want to save it, anywhere you want on your machine. Make sure we're in a 3D environment. We don't need any asset packages because we'll deal with them at a later date in the series. And then click on Create Project. So, once we've done that, Unity started up, you will have the default window which looks a little something like this. So, for first timers in Unity, it can be a little daunting for those who've used it before and can know what they're doing, you know what's going on here. I'll explain a few things for the beginners in this anyway. So, over here on the left hand side we have the hierarchy. The hierarchy is a place where we store all our objects within this scene in text format. For example, the main camera is an actual object in the scene view right here. And the scene is where we can see what we're actually building. And we can select things within the scene, which then highlight in the hierarchy. Ideally, we need things to be here, kind of not messy, as it were, because a messy hierarchy can mean a bit of a messy scene. So it's always good to keep things neat and tidy whenever possible. The next tab along here is Game. And if we click it, that's pretty much what we'll see. And all this game view is, is whatever our main camera is currently rendering. Now this is where we play our main game, so when we've got something to play, we've built something within our scene, we're able to press this play button up here and see it in our scene view. So like I say, whatever the camera is rendering, that's what we see. And a quick shortcut as well, instead of the play button, if we hold control and press P, we can automatically play that way. And the same again to stop, hold control, press P. Now over here we have the inspector panel. The inspector panel is where we have all the components attached to an object and a component is defined as something which can manipulate that object. So for example, the directional light has a light component. That means it will generate the light that we need. In this case, it's a directional light. Now we will go into lighting uh, in a couple of episodes time when we have something within our scene, so we don't need to worry about it for now. But within the inspector panel, we can also add components whenever we need to. And again, we'll go through that. But the top and bottom of it all is the inspector panel gives you all the details about whatever object you have selected. Now, down the bottom here, we have the project window, and this is where we store all our assets. An asset can be defined as things like a texture, an object, a script, uh, some audio, all kinds of things that we can import into Unity or create within Unity, they are stored down here. And it's always great to keep this neat and tidy as well. Next to it, we have the console. 
We're not going to worry with the console too much in the first couple of episodes because this is where we see, for example, any errors or warnings that may occur when we have, say, create a script or whatever. So if we have an error in the script, it will tell us here what's wrong. And the final one we have here is animation. Now, not everybody may have animation to begin with. If you want to have it, all you need to do is click this little menu button here, click on Add Tab, and then click on Animation. And it will bring this up. We're not going to use this just yet, but there are times and places to use the Animation tab, and we'll probably use it at some point in this series. One final thing to note is that we can move these tabs around. So for example, if we want the Game tab to be down here, we can literally hold the tab itself and move it to wherever we would want it to be. So we can snap it next to the hierarchy. We can snap it here. Or we can just have it as a free window like that. And all you need to do, as I say, is just hold down your left mouse button on that tab and snap it to where you want it to be. So I'm going to keep my layout as default as most beginners do tend to stay with the default layout. Uh, most game engines do have a similar sort of layout, but you know, you get the one that is most comfortable to you and how you want things to be. So let's get into actually creating something within Unity. Ideally, everything we do in Unity can be done quickly and simply, but there are little complications that can occur depending on what we're trying to do. For example, if we just want to put in a cube, that's no problem at all. We can just go to game object up here and we can go to 3D object and we can input a cube. Perfect. Now, as a project which is brand new, by default, it should actually put that cube in the center of our scene. And we can tell it's center by looking at the position right here. And it is zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero is the absolute middle of the scene. If we were to move the cube, you would see these positions change. And we can actually move the cube by holding the mouse over the X, Y, or Z axis. Uh, I say Z because I'm British, but we can say Z if we want. Uh, and we just hold the left mouse button and we can move along that axis. And as we do that, you can see the position in the inspector panel changing on the X axis. So that's one way of moving an object. Another way, if we hover the mouse over the letters X, Y, or Z, we can actually slide it by holding the left mouse button again, or we can physically, uh, physically sorry, type in an actual number. And as you can see, it's now disappeared. If we want to get that back in focus, we can just double click that item on the hierarchy. There we go. Use the middle mouse wheel to scroll in and out and then hold down the right mouse button and you can pan around in the center of where you are right now. So let's put this cube back in the center of our scene. So let's change the X back to zero and the Z or Z back to zero. And let's double click the cube and we can see we're back in the center. Now there are many different objects that we can create within Unity quite simply. For example, we can create another 3D object and have a sphere. And same principle applies to any object within Unity, whether it's an asset, a prefab, which we'll explain at a later date, or anything you have in your scene. The same principle applies. You can move these items in whichever direction you want. To undo, same as Windows, hold Control, press Z. And we can undo all the way. And to get rid of an object, we can just press delete as you would expect to rename we can right click in hierarchy and we can rename right there and let's call this base block 001 i always like to have numbering conventions when i create because it gives me a sense of how far i'm going with a game for example if we have 99 base blocks then that may be too many so it's always good to at least have a number so we can separate what is what. And do you remember earlier I said about the inspector panel, we have different components. This is a great example of showing how these components within the inspector panel can work. If we zoom into our cube, you should see a very faint green line surrounding the actual cube. This is known as a collider. 
A collider prevents objects from going through or into each other. It's not always necessarily the best way to prevent collisions. However, in this case, a box collider is what is surrounding this cube. And if we untick here, we should see it go even fainter. That means that the box collider is no longer active on our actual object. To see that even better, what we can do is turn off our mesh renderer. Now the mesh renderer is what surrounds the cube visually. In this case, it's just a very gray white kind of texture, which is something we'll deal with in the next episode. But we can turn that off by clicking right there. And you can see that this green line is quite visible again, but if we turn on the box collider here, it becomes much more prominent. So when it is very light green, it means this component is active. And when it is a very dim green, it means it's inactive. So let's turn those back on and let's zoom out with our middle mouse wheel. Now, do you remember earlier I said that anything we make in Unity can be developed for any platform which is supported? If we click on File over here, go down to Build Settings, we can see here the actual platforms that we can currently build for. Now, it's worth noting things like iOS and Android, they will work very similar in this window. Obviously, they would need different controls, perhaps for touch, but that's something we can deal with at a later date. Things like PS Vita and PS4 would require a license, so you would have to actually contact uh, Unity themselves to sort out a license to develop for those right there. And obviously, if you don't have modules installed for certain um, platforms, you would need to install those modules. So for now, I'm going to stick to PC, Mac and Linux, but if you wish to develop for iOS or Android at this point, you would click these. It's worth noting, the sooner you transfer your platform by clicking switch platform, the better, because the bigger your project, the longer it will take to switch the platform. So we just need to click the little X right there. Next thing I'm going to go into is something called snap settings. So if we go to edit and go to uh, snap settings just down the bottom here, we'll see it's currently set in my case to 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 by 0 0.25. I'm now going to change this to one by one by one. Now what a snap setting is, is it means that instead of moving this object just by holding the left mouse button and moving it ever so slowly, if we hold down the control button at the same time, we can actually snap it to one position at a time. So we have these set. I'm going to click the X. I'm going to hold down the control button and I'm going to move this along and you can see it snaps in chunks up here of one by one so hold control hold left mouse button and move and you can see each snap is going at what we've set in our snap settings in whichever direction we choose so if you were to have the snap as 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 then every time you snap it would change it by 0 0.5 in the position here. So let's set that back to 0 by 0 by 0. The snap setting is coming very useful, or they certainly will in this series, because of the way we're going to design things. It means that things snap together with absolutely no gap in between the objects to make things look seamless. So the last thing we're going to look at is the rotation and scale of an object. You can rotate by hovering your mouse over, then holding the left mouse button and you can drag and you can see the rotation is occurring. Same applies to the X, Y and Z. Nice and simple and you can always type in the actual rotation itself and if you get a bit lost and confused remember 0, 0, 0 returns it to its original position. The scale is just the size of the object itself. In this case we could change it to 2 by 2 by two, and we can see the cube is literally, well, four times the size it originally was. So we can reduce that maybe to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so it's a much smaller cube. And depending on how big you want your game to be, the size and scale of objects is what is important. So let's set it back to one by one by one. Now, last thing we'll do before we finish this first episode, 
is we will save our scene. And we can either go File, Save Scenes, or Save Scene As, or hold Control, press S. And let's save this as Level 0, zero 1 and save. And you'll notice down here, this has now become an asset. As I say, anything we create in Unity is classed as an asset one way or another. And you'll notice the file name for this is level001.unity. It's still an asset. It's in the base folder of our assets folder, which is not a problem. We can keep it there for now. It may be convenient for us at a later date. So next episode, we are going to take a look at some textures. We're going to look at some materials and we're going to have a look at some prefab and grouping of items. So until that next episode, guys, thank you very much for watching.